Welcome back, fans of Authenticate. If you're printing Authenticate parts like this P40B throttle, or this Spitfire chassis or, or gear lever, or if you're asking someone else to print them, then it's critical to understand that normal 100% true calibration is not what you need. You need to calibrate your printer to the Authenticate loose fit calibration standard. Now it is still useful to first calibrate your printer accurately if you are comfortable doing this and there are plenty of YouTube tutorials that explain the process of getting your X, Y and Z steps just right and your filament flow bang on. However, my aim with Authenticate is to get this 3D printed flight control solution accessible to anyone who can assemble Lego or Meccano. So very often the factory calibration of your 3D printer is good enough and then you just need to do some small tweaks to achieve LFC or loose fit calibration. In this video I'm going to cover the following. Why do you need to do this? And why doesn't true calibration work? The LFC approach in a nutshell, the downloadable calibration widgets, how to adjust your slicer whether that's Cura or Prusa slicer to get perfect LFC and some general tips and advice. So why do you need to do this and why doesn't true calibration work? Well if you don't calibrate things simply won't fit together. Fire buttons will stick instead of freely moving like this. Bearings will not go onto pegs or they'll be loose. Magnets won't fit into these cavities and you'll have to spend a lot of time with sandpaper, a drill or a knife trimming and preparing. Now when I design and test parts for these controls they need to come straight off the printer and fit immediately without doing anything to them. Now maybe I need to scrape a fine stringy bit off with my fingernail if the filament has absorbed a bit of moisture and it isn't at its best but I hate fettling stuff now that's a fine Northern England word, isn't it? Fettling, fixing, tweaking, adjusting. So if fettling is needed, then I might use it in a prototype, but I will redesign the part until no fettling is needed. Okay, so why not design just for true calibration? Two reasons, two main reasons. Firstly, ease of design. This bearing has an outer diameter of 15 millimeters. If that hole was exactly 15 millimeters, there would be zero gap. So that would be a super tight fit. And basically it wouldn't fit, particularly because it's probably not too easy to spot on here, but 3D printed parts, they're made of layers, as you know, and those, va those layers are gonna have slight variations. So it's not going to be a perfectly smooth wall, which means it'll be smaller than 15 mil in places. So it just won't fit. So if my bearing is 15 millimeters, I'd need to design tolerances. I'd need to make sure that the holes were fractionally bigger and anything going inside that was printed would have to be slightly smaller. Now that makes the design process more complex and a lot of my rapid design techniques wouldn't work. Now that's not only a problem for me as I intend to share these design tools and techniques and I want design to be easy for others who may be novices. Also, it would require that people have calipers to test and measure and I wanted something simpler than that. So here is the Authenticate loose fit calibration approach in a nutshell. Quite simply, we can be assured of things fitting together. If the holes are a little bit larger than the true value, and the outer perimeters are a little bit smaller. Now there's an easy way to do this using the 3D printer's settings. Now I can't tell you the exact values to use as it depends on the filament and the printer's underlying calibration. So what you need to do is print out a test piece and check it against a precise reference. Now this doesn't mean you need to buy calipers because anyone building an Authenticate project already has plenty of precise references. Because bearings such as this 6803 bearing are generally manufactured to between 0.05 and 0.1 accuracy which is good enough for us as 0.04. Now as an aside, for long-standing Authenticate fans, you may have noticed that I haven't mentioned magnets. In my early videos, I told you to check your calibration with a magnet. Well, unfortunately, I've since learned that most of these magnets have poor dimensional consistency. I've seen sides as small as 4.6 millimeters and as large as 5.1 millimeters, that's 4.7, 
So that's a 10% error, which is way too much. So now I base them on bearings, which as I say are typically accurate to between 0.05 and 0.1 millimeters. So like a good suit, it's all about the fit. And it's all well and good having a 3D printed calibration disc like this and a reference source like this, but how tight a fit should it be? Should I need to drive it in with a hammer or should it drop through freely? Well, this reference disc is designed to fit inside a 6803 bearing or inside a 6003 bearing or around a 684 bearing. And I'll show you how it should fit. Before I do this though, make sure your reference widget has printed cleanly. If it has zits, I don't know if that, how well that's coming across. Or stringing, it will be no good. So you may need to dry your filament, sort out any retraction issues, and I'll link to some videos on that, and also watch out for elephant's foot. This is where the first layer, the layer that's down on the print bed, is squished so hard onto the print bed that there's a wide lip around the edge. Now, you can get the print bed height set just right, but you can also, if you're struggling with that, use elephant's foot compensation settings in your slicer to make that first layer just a little bit narrower and to offset the elephant's foot. So, get a clean widget. That's not very clean. That one is. And now the moment of truth. The peg should slide through the bearing, just holding itself in but not falling through. And it shouldn't need any force. So I'll, I'll just play with this a little and give you a sense of, of how much force there is. Let me try it in this one. They are slightly different, I said. There's really no force. In fact, there's times with a little shake it would fall through. It's not doing it at the moment. I feel like I've seen it do that before. So that is the right fit for loose fit calibration. And how about the internal one? Well, the internal one is, is a bit looser. It, it, uh, that way it kind of falls through. Yeah, so it's just kind of holding itself, but with a, with a tap it'll fall through. That's okay, maybe a fraction tighter, but actually your printer has a limit to, its, to the precision it can achieve. So you may find if you print three of these on a print bed, they're all fractionally different. But that's the ballpark, that's what you're aiming for. Now that widget requires a 6003 or a 6803 bearing and also a 684 bearing and that allows you to test the external as well as the internal perimeters. But while making the video, I realized that depending on the project you're building, you may not have these bearings. If you're building a P51D throttle, for example, or in fact a P40B throttle, you've only got 6803 bearings. So. I've made three calibration widgets to cope with a range of scenarios and these are now available via a download and I'll put a link on the website. So that is the first one, widget one. And if you have these bearings, then you can test everything you need. And now that's widget two. Now if you only have a 6803, with this one, you can test the external perimeter. And with this, you can test the internal perimeter. And then finally, Widget 3, sometimes you may find that you've only got one of these, but you do have one of these. So that will test the internal perimeter. And then that again, test the external perimeter. So now you know how it should feel, what the correct calibration is like using the test pieces, these test widgets. But how do you set it up in your 3D slicer? I'll show you in Cura, as most people use that, and this is the section you need. So over here, I can expand the print settings. Now, the settings we're looking for are under walls. We can see here that we can choose wall thickness and horizontal expansion, but we actually need a bit more than that. That horizontal expansion doesn't give us the full flexibility to control the external and internal parameters. So what you need to do is make sure you can see all the settings. Now, if you click this little menu thing here, you can go to expert or maybe all, and then that shows you more settings under walls. And if I go down here, here they are horizontal, an initial layer horizontal and whole horizontal. 
Now what you can actually do is choose to have a selection of options which is kind of customized. So I've made this thing called custom selection and um, that's for a, another video but um, it just allows us to focus in this video on what I'm trying to tell you about which is that now under walls we can see horizontal expansion, initial layer horizontal expansion and whole horizontal expansion. And I've got the setting in Cura here as minus 0.5. Now that's what you're generally going to have, a negative value, because it's going to make the external perimeter slightly smaller. Now the other thing that we need to look at is whole horizontal expansion, because we want to make the holes slightly larger, so that's a positive value. And then the only other thing we've got here which helps us with our elephant's foot is initial layer horizontal expansion. So on top of the outer diameter, the, out, the outside perimeter being slightly smaller, there's an extra reduction being applied on the initial layer to compensate for elephant's foot. So those are the settings. Now what you'll need to do is try some and just experiment. I'd suggest going up by chunks of around 0.02 or 3 because um, one of the problems that you get with a slicer is that it, it, there is a minimum resolution. You may find that you only got by 0.01 and you don't really see a difference because the slicer is rounding it and it's not ending up any different to what you had before. So experiment with numbers like that. By the way, here's a quick tip. Here's something you can do within the slicer before you print it. Just for peace of mind that things aren't going completely crazy. So here's widget one, the round calibration disc. And we've got the settings which I've shown you. Negative 0.5 for the regular expansion, positive 06 for the whole expansion, and then you've got the initial layer. So I sliced that. And you can see that that's a preview now. Let's see the preview. There's a preview of what it will look like. So just take a sort of you know mental photograph of that. So let me change that horizontal expansion now. And let me add a really big chunk so things are quite obvious. I'm going to go for 0.55. So that's half a millimeter that it's shrinking it in. And now slice it. It's pretty obvious, isn't it, that the outside has shrunk. And if we go back again to the 05 and slice it again. There it is bigger. Okay, and how about we do the same with the whole expansion? So, mental photograph, let's go for something really extreme. 2.06, so we're making the whole two millimeters bigger all the way around, so it's probably four millimeters diameter. There you go, huge hole. So that is something you might want to try in the slicer just to kind of reassure yourself that you're having the desired effect with your changes. Okay, let's quickly see how we can do the same thing in Prusa. So the settings we're looking for are under Print Settings, and it defaults to the Layers and Perimeters section in there, but if we go down to Advanced, then down here we can see XY Size Compensation and Elephant Foot Compensation. So the Elephant Foot uh, is just what I was talking about before, which was the Horizontal Expansion First Layer. That's what that's all about. Uh, and the XY size compensation, well that, unfortunately, it's a kind of a combination of whole and horizontal expansion. So what I found is if I put, say it was 0.1 in there, or negative 0.1, I will shrink the outer diameter by 0.1, shrink it by 0.1, but also increase the internal uh, walls or the, or the holes by 0.1. So you haven't got that different control on the outer and the inner. Uh, I've found that I can get a good enough result from that. Um, it would be nice to have the different ones, but unfortunately it's not available in Prusa Slicer. Okay, just a few things before I wrap up this video. I've already mentioned stringing and zits or blobs, so don't even start testing if your calibration discs, your widgets, are really scruffy, like this one here. Even cutting them off with a craft knife just isn't reliable as a solution. That's what I've found anyway. The next point is that because LFC means that parts fit together easily, there is scope for looseness in, say, a mag hole, and I've discovered that this can translate into inaccurate readings. So you'll find that these mag hole pegs have tighteners on them. Hopefully that's visible on the camera there. And that makes sure that even though it's a loose fit for calibration, when you press the bearing onto it, it's a good firm fit, but not too firm, hopefully. So the other point, of course, is don't use the peg as a test for calibration. Those tighteners are intended to make it tight. Another tip, why not include one of these calibration pieces on every print batch that you make? If you've got a bunch of items on a print bed, 
throwing one of these won't add any time at all hardly and it'll be a useful test because if you find that you're having problems of things fitting you can take your calibration piece off and see if the problem was actually calibration. And the final point is that unfortunately calibration can vary by colour. So even if you're using eSun PLA Plus for all of your prints, the black might behave a little differently to the grey. So that's something to consider as well. Okay folks, this was the calibration widgets video. If you've got any questions, I'd suggest joining our Discord community. It's full of helpful people willing to answer questions and help you out, and there's a link in the description. In the meantime, happy printing, and don't forget to share photos of your authenticate controls, please, when you've built them. And I'll include a link to the gallery where we'd love to see them. Bye for now, folks.